So taking up from where we had left in the previous session, in this one, we are going to talk about how to actually calculate the free cash flows and both the versions, free cash flow to the firm as well as to the equity. Now, honestly speaking, let me be upfront. This is a part where maximum students find it very, very confusing. Well, maybe because it involves a bit of integrate calculations or it also involves a bit of the understanding of the FRA that you've done in your level one as far as the cash flow statements are concerned. So uh, let's just try and quickly revise what did we mean by both these things and this graphical representation will give you some peace of mind in uh, simplifying some of the aspects that you know are going to come up uh, in the forthcoming slides. So uh, just a quick recall, free cash flow to the firm was the after tax cash flow that the firm was able to generate after making all other payments, both belonging to equity plus debt. I'm just writing equity plus debt. In other words, can I call it as operating in that sense? The reason being no non-operational deduction has been done. On the other hand, your free cash flow to equity was again an after tax in cash flow terms the value the, f the the pool that gets generated only from the point of view of equity okay that means the interest and the principal etc have been deducted so there is one very simple relationship that i have uh, between these two parameters this pool b belongs to both equity plus debt and this belongs only to equity so that said whatever delta that I need to pay to the debt holders needs to come between you know this stage. So you got to pay interest to them, you got to pay principal to them and if at all if they are bringing up more capital then you have to add the borrowings. And sometimes in the formula that you will read in your core books and uh, you know the other financial literature it is called as plus net borrowings. Now I would strongly request all the students not to be confused with these signs so, so you know there are some signs here like it says minus capex uh, it says plus net borrowings all you have to understand whether the cash is coming in or going out that's the only request that I have please do not get lost in the formula okay uh, another important point that I want to highlight up front why am I doing 1 minus t here and I'm not doing 1 minus t here uh, for a very simple reason that interest is an expense and uh, it's a tax deductible expense and only the expense part is uh, you know kind of made after tax principal and borrowings on the other hand is the liability portion I mean it doesn't go to the income statement when you borrow something it is there is no tax shield that you get so that said uh, there is no tax on asset stroke liability the tax is there only on income and expenses and that's what is you know kind of after made after tax so now let's come to an important point here and let's just you know sort out a lot of confusion uh, my endeavor every time will be to arrive at CFAT now, I'll tell you why I'm also calling it as CFO now the CFAT is exactly the same CFAT that you have done in your corporate finance the capital budgeting the value that you plot on the time zone before discounting it and calling it PVCI this is exactly the same uh, fundamental. Now, what is this CFAT? Now, CFAT is the operational plus cash flow parameter from which all other expenses, including taxes, have been paid. So, for any parameter or any value to be called a CFAT, it needs to possess these three characteristics. Operational, it has to be cash flow, and it has to be after tax. Now, my limited point is, if the question directly gives you CFAT, you directly start from here and start moving this side. The only thing that you got to do before arriving at free cash flow to the firm is to adjust for CFI. Now, this is again a very simple point. If I am buying machinery, uh, if I am buying machinery worth rupees 100 and selling the old machinery worth rupees 80, so my common sense tell me that there is a net machine bought worth rupees 20, which means there is an outflow of $20 which means I will deduct 20 here okay so uh, now now the confusion will start that if the question says the capex is $20 will I subtract this 20 or will I add this 20 well let's just keep it very commonsensical if it is a capex it's a capital expenditure if it is a net expenditure I will have to deduct okay it is quite possible that the question gives you the values with sign it says 
परचेज ऑफ मशीनरी एंड सेल ऑफ न्यू मशीनरी सेल ऑफ ओल्ड मशीनरी सो ऑटोमेटिकली दिस ट्वेंटी गेट्स अ नेगेटिव साइन तो आई विल नॉट अगेन एड अ नेगेटिव साइन बिफोर समथिंग विच इज नेगेटिव यू यू गेट माई पॉइंट्स अदरवाइज इट इज गोन बिकम द नेट सेल ऑफ मशीनरी सो लेट्स नॉट बी लॉस्ट इन द फॉर्मूला दैट्स माई ओनली पॉइंट सो एज यू अंडरस्टूड यू नो दिस इज अगेन द फनल डायग्राम दैट वी आर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड इन अ मोर लैटरल सेंस नाउ so you have you know your cash flow uh, you know the, the broad inflows then you deduct the operating expenses to arrive at cfo which is this level then you deduct your cfi which is this level to arrive at fcff which is this level from there you make payments to the equity shareholders uh, you make payment to the debt shareholder uh, the, the, the bond holders which is like these three and then finally you arrive at free cash flow to equity now it is an important again point and it's although a very simple point that there is no payment so far being made to the common equity the buyback or the dividends being paid to them okay now the key point to arrive at cf 80 where will you start and what is the delta that you will be doing uh, are two interrelated things i have these four equations for you 1 2 3 and 4 my only request is please do not try to mug them up the first four equation or in fact all five equations i mean i'm just counting four and five to be very similar because you know both starts with cfo my first four equations are starting with different parameters okay so you will see that since the destination is same but my starting parameter is different the delta that i have to do is different and that is where you know this particular graph or this graphical representation will help you so if i'm starting with pat is this a accrual phenomena or a cash phenomena my pat is a accrual phenomena so to be able to arrive at a cash parameter remember that i have to get to a value which is which has all the three characteristics so what am i supposed to do i will make the delta to bring in all the three aspects for example allow me to start with pat now is pat an operating parameter or is it an is it a total parameter well pat also includes some of the non operating expenses like interest so what am i supposed to do i will add back the interest okay and since interest is tax deductible i am going to add that back as 1 minus t second so so that means the moment i add back the interest and obviously i am assuming that interest is the only non operating element if the question has more non operating element i'll have to remove every one of them so right now i'm just assuming that it's only the interest part so the moment i add back the interest i have taken into consideration the operational part and now pat plus interest 1 minus t becomes my operating parameter second point is this cash aspect or is it accrual aspect now my pat is an accrual aspect to convert it into cash i will have to add back the depreciation and subtract the working capital investment now this is exactly what you used to do in your level 1 corporate finance the indirect method any non any non cash expenses need to be added back and the working capital investment the net investment that you're putting in from your pocket it is like increase in the current assets should be deducted and increase in the current liability should be added back so net working capital investment means that the current asset increase is a little more than increase in the current liability and therefore the net amount needs to be paid from the pocket since it's amount to be paid my cash flows will go down my cash flows will go down and therefore i have put a negative sign now important aspect here is a combo of these two will help you convert this parameter into cash so the moment i do that i have taken into consideration this as well the third aspect is the parameter that i'm starting with is it after tax answer is yes it is after tax so therefore i do not need anything to do that so net net point net net point the moment in pat i do adjustment number 1 adjustment number 2 i arrive at something called as cf80 in that when i do this adjustment number 3 then automatically i arrive at fcf so let's just look at the equation that we have this is the starting point so this was my adjustment number 1 to remove the non operational aspect this was my adjustment number 2 to convert the accrual into cash and this was my adjustment number 3 to arrive at fcff so honestly speaking if you ask me what is cf80 i'm going to say net income 
plus 1 plus 2. That's it. So I am not bound by any formula to understand that all the above are different expressions of the same figure of FCFF. What is FCFF? FCFF is after tax, it is a cash flow, it is pure operational after deducting the CFI. So if you look at it, if you look at it, the CFI is something which is common in all across. And the remaining portion that you see in the equations is nothing but your CFAT. Okay, so let's just let's just kind of get in, get involved a little bit more. So let's start from EBIT in this case. Now just keep these three parameters in mind. Uh, we need an operational thing, we need a cash flow thing, and we need an after tax thing. So first thing is this EBIT after tax? Answer is a big no. EBIT is before tax. So I got to multiply the same to make it after tax. The first thing that I'm going to do. Second, is this operating? Answer is yes, this is operating because EBIT is called as the operating profit. So there is no non-operating thing which has been deducted. So I am, I have taken care of this, I have taken care of this. Now is this cash? No, this is accrual. So what I need to do is I will have to convert it into cash. So my adjustment of, you know, this plus depreciation minus working capital investment is going to come handy. And that's how I will be able to arrive at CFAT starting from EBIT. And if I deduct the CFI, I'm going to get to FCFF. So let's just see what does the equation for EBIT tells me. Now equation to EBIT has the first adjustment of making it after tax. The second adjustment of converting it into the cash parameter from the accrual. And it do not, it does not need to add back the interest for a very simple reason that the starting point is already operational. Obviously you can look at it mathematically as well. Why to add back the interest if the same has not been deducted so far? So EBIT is earning before interest and tax. So you haven't deducted interest. So there's no need to add it back. You get my point? So this is the same fundamental that we used to do with my cash flow from operations under the indirect method wherein my starting proxy used to be PAT and in that I used to exclude everything which I did not need in CFO. So I need to exclude depreciation in which it has been deducted to exclude it. I will have to add back. So if anything has not been deducted, I will not add back that. Okay, so that's the point. So let's just talk about um, the third aspect. The third aspect where the starting point is EBITDA. Now this is going to be a little different and let's pay attention to that. Um, is EBITDA before tax or after tax? My EBITDA here is a before tax element. So the first thing I'm going to do is to make it after tax. Multiply that by 1 minus T. Now is it pure operational? Yes, because you know it is not even fully operational. I mean e even the depreciation has not been deducted. So I will not add back the interest because the same has not been deducted. The third set, is it cash or accrual? Well, right now it is accrual. I need to convert it into cash. Now, just pay attention to this fact. The adjustment that I used to do, plus depreciation, minus working capital investment. This time, since depreciation also has not been deducted from EBITDA, there is no point of adding that back. So when I calculate EBITDA into one minus T, I have converted this level of profit directly into after tax assuming that the depreciation expense does not exist and this becomes you know, my after tax element well this is an incomplete story because depreciation actually exists but since it does not entails an outflow per se but brings in the tax saving I will just multiply it by the tax percentage. So this is exactly again the sim very similar point to the capital budgeting, the role of depreciation, the separate video that we have recorded. So in case you have any problem, maybe you want to you know, look at that, uh, you know, in, in capital budgeting for level two, that if the depreciation has not been deducted from the starting point, it still has a cash flow impact, which is that it reduces my taxable income and brings in the tax saving. So if the depreciation has not been deducted from the starting point. See, by the way, in PAT, it has been deducted. In EBIT, it has been deducted. So therefore, I will have to add back the entire thing. But from EBITDA, it has not been deducted. So there's no point of adding back the depreciation per se. 
but at the same time the depreciation brings in some tax benefits so at least i need to consider the tax portion out of that the working capital investment stays as it is so if you look at the ebitda the third equation so you are making it after tax you adding the depreciation tax saving and the working capital so this time the cash adjustment so the accrual to cash adjustment is not plus dep minus wci it is it has changed to plus depreciation into the tax saving okay um well allow me to explain the you know perhaps the perhaps the uh, last thing before we get on to the numerical here is the cfo portion now cfo we have understood in us cap that there is a bit of dichotomy as far as the logic versus the rule is concerned when we talk about the us gap so my cfo under the us gap has to include the deduction because of the interest also now interest per se is a financial element we all understand that but my us gap rule said that it needs to be deducted from the cfo itself so pay attention to the fact what uh, you know which standard is being followed in the question if the question is following the cfo as per the us gap then you are not standing here maybe you are standing a stage before that the cfo of the us gap has interest deduction in it in order to arrive at an operating thing you need to remove that deduction and i better add interest 1 minus t in order to arrive at this level so what i'm trying to essentially say that cfo under ifrs is exactly equal to cfat of capital budgeting but it is a little different than cfo of the us gap i need to remove the interest deduction in order to make it a cfo under the ifrs okay then once we have arrived at so 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 this particular box becomes cfat and once you've arrived at cfat the only you know thing that you got to adjust is for the capex okay and uh, this is a line i'm i'm going to kind of come uh, you know come back to it come back to it you know in a while uh, so this is like a very simple thing how do you calculate the fcfe once you've arrived at the fcff from different sources all you got to do is you got to you know kind of deduct the interest and add the net borrowings and here i'm assuming that there are some borrowings happening and some repayments happening if the repayments are more by the way then obviously you know this essentially becomes a negative sign so i'm not getting lost in the formula i'm just trying to cover it up with my common sense now um, another another very small aspect that i would like to highlight now in one of the calculations of fcff you saw that we started with net income in which i added back the interest 1 minus t uh, then i did something with my depreciation minus working capital adjustment mm, then i reduced my fixed capital investment to call it fcff now if i have to just plug in this value in this equation and continue uh, with the these two portions minus interest 1 minus t plus net borrowings is equal to fcfe okay so this essentially is fcff and making these two adjustments is fcfe now here if my starting point is net income my plus interest will be cancelled out with a negative interest so the net point that i am left with is your net income plus dep minus wci minus fci minus net borrowings so that's how the formula becomes a little condensed and you might see that fcfe the calculation of that now please pay attention to this fact your starting point is net income your starting point is net income this also belongs only to equity and this also belongs only to equity that means the action of making it operational and then again deducting something that did not belong to me will be cancelled out with it and therefore you will not have to kind of do the interest adjustment here i hope that you know this point is clear but you got to understand the interim step that from net income it is always better to arrive at fcff and from there you got to arrive at fcfe i'm just why i'm raising this point here that interest adjustment might not be required that if sometimes you are allowed to uh, compute fcfe and you're given net income you might not be given the interest in the question so that doesn't mean that you are given an incomplete information effectively the interest will get cancelled down and you don't need the value of interest i hope that you get this point so um i have a quick question 
which we should be doing by all the three starting points which is my net income which is my EBIT and which is my EBITDA okay to arrive at CFAT and from there we are going to talk about deducting the fixed capital CFI to arrive at FCFF so let's just take one by one at a time so from net income okay now is this an accrual uh, so, so let's just talk about from the tax point of view so is it an after tax or before tax so net income is after tax I do not need to do anything for the taxes is it pure operational no we got to make it operational so I'm going to in this uh, any non operating element that I can see is the interest part I will have to add back the interest 1 minus T which is into 0.7 is the starting point accrual yes so I got to adjust it for cash so I will add back the depreciation since depreciation has been entirely deducted from it I may not be able to add back the entire 15 here okay because it has not been deducted from it so I will add back the depreciation here and will subtract the working capital investment that is being given to me is 35 so my net income is 38.5 a quick maths will give me a CFAT of 25.5 dollars okay let's just see if I'm calculating it right let's start with EBIT in this case now so EBIT is your 65 is it after tax no so I go to make that after tax first okay um, has interest been deducted from it answer is no so there is no need to add back the interest and is it accrual yes I go to make it cash by adding back the depreciation and removing the working capital adjustment or maybe adjusting the working capital adjustment so 65 into 0.7 plus 15 minus 35 I'm also getting the same number 25.5 let's start with EBITDA now now EBITDA here is $80 let me take a new color so EBITDA here is $80 is it before tax yes I got to make it after tax first uh, has uh, this depreciation been deducted out of that no so I will take only the tax saving of the depreciation and subtract the working capital so this adjustment becomes my accrual to cash fundamental okay uh, so is it pure operational answer is yes it is already operational there is no uh, interest or any kind of non operative thing being deducted up to this level so that's it I think I should be getting 25.5 let's do a quick math here also I'm getting 25.5 so 25.5 is the CFAT it is the same as corporate finance capital budgeting it is also the CFO of IFRS where the interest reduction has not been taken into consideration so let's just deduct the uh, capex that you have done so now look at the sign it is working it is the fixed capital investment is 10 so the investment has been done of 10 that means I will have to deduct 10 okay so this is the common sense I mean if you're saying that I am making an investment that means the cash outflow is happening and therefore my FCFF has become 15.5 dollars okay how would you calculate FCFE using the same set of data maybe uh, you know I will I will just take it from where we have left so 15.5 was FCFF now from there you got to deduct the interest after tax and any fresh borrowings being done to be added minus any payments to or principal so there is a net borrowing of 50 borrowing is anyways a positive inflow so the cash would have come in the pocket of equity stakeholders and that's how I will just quickly calculate that so this is minus 7 58.5 is FCFE okay so I hope that you know this calculation was or should I say is now a little less confusing okay I'm going to come back to this point in my forthcoming session one of the forthcoming session where will I will highlight the role of preference shares as a dedicated slide okay so this point needs a little more detailing so I'm just parking this thought in your mind and maybe you know in, in my next session where I will talk about the inputs for FCFF there I will you know kind of take up the role of this okay so uh, should you have any questions please post it at ankur.k at finstudyclub.com we'll be happy to help